<laughs> okay, so while I'm like trying to get comfortable in this seat, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Kyle, and I'm coming from Korea. And currently, I'm working at Facebook as a solutions architect for a workplace. Workplace is connecting the people in the workplace to communicate well. I nice see you. Um, hi, I'm Clara. Um, I'm actually a graduate of the previous batch uh, of the boot camp, and I'm currently working as a junior software developer after I graduated from boot camp. Yeah. Hi, my name is Suyuan. I'm the co-founder of an on-demand tech talent platform called Momo Central. Yeah. Yeah, so today the topic of our discussion is really the skills about the skills that you need to navigate and succeed in the tech industry. As you as you have already noticed that the panel panelists have very diverse and different backgrounds, some technical, some non uh, one not technical, the rest are two have uh, CS degrees, but they are not software engineers, uh, even though Su Yan can code. And still coding now too, right? Yeah, still coding. Yeah, yeah. So just wanna just wanna as we as we start the discussion, do start thinking about questions that you are curious to find out from their experiences, uh, because not every day that you have a panel like that um, in front of you. Okay, so um, I think you give a brief introduction of your like I mentioned, like you have a CS degree, you have a CS degree, you don't have a CS degree. What were, what Clara? What were you doing before? <laughs> I don't enjoy talking about this. <laughs> uh, I was actually running my own uh, fashion business online for about four to five years before I got tired of the industry. And uh, when the tech ladies uh, boot camp application came about, I decided that, okay, this is the catalyst. I should just try and apply for it. And uh, haven't looked back since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Surian, what were you doing before starting Momo Central? Oh. Yeah, I've done like five field startups before, uh, but give you a background, I used to work as a graphic designer in a design agency and we were designing things for like Sony, LG, everyone. Uh, but my frustration came from every time I came up with this great, or rather I thought it was great campaign idea, uh, the project manager would take it to the tech team and the tech team would say, no, this is not possible within the timeline of budget or this is just impossible to do. And if you hit that 90% of the time, you get like, is this really for real? Like 90% of my idea just got thrown out like that. So I thought like, you know, I'm just going to do a computer science degree and stay for real myself so that I can build it myself anyway. And it turns out that they were lying most of the time. <laughs> and I was like, this stuff wasn't that hard, you know? So that's how I went to CS. Uh, then I did an internship at Apple as a software engineer. Uh, I joined a 24-hour coding competition and somehow ended up getting top four over there. Then I did a failed augmented reality startup, you know, in the day where iPad 2 didn't even have a camera. Yeah, and, and a bunch of other failed startups before, yeah, Momo Central. Mm -hmm. What about you, Kayong? Like, you have a long history at Microsoft. Yeah, I studied computer science and I started as a college hire from Microsoft Korea. So I've been there for around seven years. Mostly I do sales and technical pre-sales engineer job. And from the client windows to the security, identity, cloud bases, services system, and maybe Office 365 or Surface. So I do a bunch of the stuff. <laughs> Okay, so so Gayong, like how you have a CS degree, but I decided not to pursue a uh, software engineer role. Like, why? What what was going through your mind? Like, were you, were you did you pick CS degree thinking knowing that you want to pursue a software engineering role, or did you pursue it knowing that you don't want a software engineering role? So I decided to study about computer science because I want to work in Disney. In my young age, I was watching the Disney animation all day long, and I want to be in the part of that productions. So I asked people like, how I can be in Walt Disney, and people were asked me to learn like how to draw, but I do not have any single talent on drawing. So I found that computer graphics probably I need to learn about the programming. And I start to learn programming since like middle school, like 10 teenagers. And I didn't find anything difficult at the time. So I 
pursue that studying about computer science. And I also have a lot of interesting about the movies and society and like musicals. So I keep my communication skills well. But I found at the same time, like computer graphic designers or computer programmers having some trouble between communication, as you see. So <laughs> I found that my talent is somewhere else. But I understand how to code and how to build a code. And mm. I could be the one in the middle. So that's why I pursue as a pre-sales engineer instead of the building a program. But I do love the job and I believe this is the, my way and you guys can find another chance when you learn the programming instead of being a programmer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, just to add on another question for Gayong. Uh, so you, you were in Korea for, uh, you were in Microsoft Korea for seven years and you, like six months ago, you moved to Singapore. Yeah. So could you tell me more about how is it like in, in Korea being a woman in tech? Okay, Korea being, yeah. How, how is it like in Korea? So since uh, when I was high school, I'm in the 10% of the entire group as a female and yeah, even in high school and university and Microsoft and even now, I'm the only one within our team. So I try to keep my focus on the work because I'm trying to be a perfectionist, but at the same time, I keep myself confident. And compared to Microsoft and Facebook, the culture is totally different. Like Microsoft is like a 40s, like my parents' ages. <laughs> Sorry to say that, but I do love my favorite works. And they grow me up like a parent. And now I'm in the Facebook, which is like teenagers. Everyone wants to play hard and work hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe that cultural aspects, the company is totally different. And I found Singapore, it's much diverse and they uh, support the female worker as well compared to Korea. So I believe I have a great movement to here. Okay, let's uh, change shift to more about the uh, having be being a software engineer. So, Suyan, I'm curious to so you see you are a software developer yourself, and you have seen a lot of software developers in in part of your company. So, um, so question is, um, so w is a CS degree important to become a software engineer? All right, so to give you guys some background, um, our platform right now, we actually go around the world and find the best and most reliable developers and designers to join our platform as freelancers. Our aim is to make the most transparent and reliable freelancer platform out there for tech talent. So me and my co-founder, CTO Jason, who actually does the wedding, is standing right there behind <laughs> with the camera taking photos of me, but hi. <laughs> So anyway, he vets, uh, I vet as well, a lot of coders and designers uh, before they're allowed to join our platform. What we found is CS degree is not a prerequisite. Like 95% of the people who apply to us fail. And even with the CS degree, they still fail. But we've also huh. found people who were math school teachers from some remote part of, say, the US or Indonesia who were self-taught coders, learned purely online, and they ended up being one of the top coders on our platform. And they were doing excellent work for like Silicon Valley clients. So they're not exactly bad, you know, they're actually really good to be able to do that. So I don't think a CS degree is important, um, but what's important I think is learning how to solve problems, um, what we call algorithmic thinking. Yeah, so what we found is no matter what language you start off with, or no, as long as your algorithmic thinking is strong and you know how to read documentation and you just keep going at all the bugs, you will eventually become a really good coder. Yeah. So having the algorithmic, uh, how do you even? Algorithmic thinking. Yeah. That, that word. <laughs> so, so do you think that's the single most important quality that separates good engineers from the not so good engineers? Um, no, but. I mean, there's one important mm. quality, but I think the rest is also communication and work attitude. Like, if you're just the follower kind and not the proactive thinker who go and seek out better solutions, 
then I think you'll be left behind. Because mm. that's also another trait that differentiates the senior developers from the juniors. Juniors, you know, I give them a task, they'll just do what they know to get it done. But a senior will start thinking about the age cases. What if this scenario that we didn't think about happens, you know, I should write a code to handle it. Yeah. Or I should proactively think, hmm, I know how to write this code this way to solve this problem, but is there a way for me to do it more efficiently? You know, so that's the difference between senior and junior. So how do you learn to be uh, an, an engineer for, for people who are the good, the, good, the good software engineers who did not have a CS degree? How did they boot become? Camp, boot camp, tech ladies, boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, success story here, like yeah. right here. <laughs> but, um, I would say as you work, like go and get jobs out there, try to get yourself paired with a senior developer who will constantly do code reviews and give you feedback about your code. So at the start, you might write code this way. It solves the problem, but may not be the most efficient. And if you're paired with a senior developer, he may be able to do a code review and say, hey, you use this method, but have you thought of using another method? And then after that, you go and Google. What's this other method he's talking about? Oh, OK, I learned something new, and let me try it right now. Okay, so how do you find this senior engineer unicorn person? Oh, uh, there's one bald head guy sitting right there. <laughs> He's one of those students. <laughs> so, um, if you guys are going to a tech job, if you can try, well, even in the interview, I think you have the right to ask for your, the sake of your own career and learning, what's their work style inside there? Do they, will they pair you with a senior developer? Do they do constant code reviews or feedback sessions? And I think if you ask those questions and in an interview, it shows the interviewer like, oh, this girl is really interested in improving herself, uh, not just doing the job. And I think that matters because then you'll start thinking, hmm, maybe I should really pair her with a senior person. Yeah. Or find Michael. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael is at Singapore uh -huh. Power. So I heard they do pair programming over there. <laughs> oh, oh, they do mock programming. Oh. Yeah, that's a fancy term for like a lot of pests. I, I don't understand what it means. I don't, I don't yeah. really understand either, okay? Just Michael, like, do you guys give one yeah. senior developer to one junior developer? Uh, it's a buddy system. Uh, uh, buddy yeah, system. so try to find out if your future potential company has a buddy system. Uh, because what you want is to improve yourself very fast. Because if you join a company without that, and I'm not saying you will never improve on your own, but there won't be someone to tell you, hey, do you think of this method? Because you would have never known, like, hey, this method exists, you know? Okay, I think what Sui mentioned is really uh, super helpful for someone who already have an existing level of uh, programming skills. So someone who is trying to get level 1 to level 2. So let's change gear to Clara. Level 0? Yeah, zero, <laughs> the 0 to 1 is actually the most important part, right? Okay, how do you get started from uh, a degree in building, fashion, fashion entrepreneur to, to really become an, an intern? You were an intern first before yeah. you become a converted as a junior role. Mm -hmm. And um, one, uh, one interesting tidbit about Clara is that like, before we first crossed paths two years before she joined the Tech Ladies Bootcamp, I only recently found out on uh, Facebook when they have the On This Day notification, I found a photo of her sitting in a corner at one of the Rails Girls workshop that I was, um, that I was, I was helping out in organizing. So Clara, you have tried programming on and off before the bootcamp. So share, share with us, you know, how did you get started? What are some of the challenges you face um, getting from zero to one? Okay. Um, so as Elisha mentioned, um, for years I was actually trying to pick up programming on my own because it was an interest of mine. Um, but I found it really difficult even through attending events like the one she mentioned to get any form of structured learning. So if I had questions or whatever, um, I would have people to help me at the event. But when I go home and look at my code and I don't understand anything, there is very little help to be found because um, I don't even know how to ask the correct questions to Google. So yeah, Googling is a very big skill to have. But um, yeah, so um, during the bootcamp, it was actually really helpful because we were assigned a mentor who would, we would meet uh, weekly uh, and we would track, the mentor would track our progress and tell us what we, uh, how we can improve, what we can do. So it's a very structured form of learning and it was very helpful to have someone there uh, along with the teammates to work on the project together and learn. I, I learned a lot from the process compared to uh, trying to learn programming on my own. So what are some of the resources that you're looking at before joining a bootcamp? Mm. 
um, the usual code school kind, but they weren't very helpful in explaining things that were not basic. Um, one resource that I found really helpful was a book, an online book written by Michael Hartle called Rails Tutorial, I think. And the book is actually online, available for free, and it takes you, the process, uh, takes you through the process of creating an app from zero to deployment, uh, as a very simple one. But it was very helpful in helping me learn how to do it, even though I didn't fully understand everything that was going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so how, what was the most difficult part of you? Uh, I think getting an internship was a pretty good step into the industry. Um, but having said that, I think we all know that you know the journey is only one percent. Oh, so Facebook to say that. Um, at Facebook, we have the saying: the journey is only one percent done. So you know we are never done. Done. You know it's always a continuous pro process. So, so Clara, what are some of the challenges that you? What are some of the things that are that challenges that you face? Mm, for me personally, it was a severe lack of knowledge uh, because I only entered the tech industry very recently and through a pretty like ad hoc manner, I didn't go through like computing school or anything. So when, let's say like she was mentioning, the senior engineers, when they're explaining things to me, sometimes I don't even understand what they're talking about. Like 50% of them are using jargon that I'm supposed <laughs> to know, but I have no idea what they're saying. So how I... <laughs> responded to that was just to ask a lot, a lot of questions and I'm pretty sure everyone at work just stuff with me already because I just keep asking questions that appear like dumb, yeah, because I have no knowledge. But yeah, having, uh, we have a buddy system at work and it's very helpful to have a mentor to always be there to answer your questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you say that you know, learning how to Google, asking a lot of questions, these are sort of like the skills that you, you highly recommend. And a lot of perseverance. <laughs> So what was some of the toughest time that you have in your transition? In my transition? In yeah, your career, the career transition. Um, yeah. For me, from the bootcamp to actual working stage, um, because during the bootcamp we built an app, and that app was very simple compared to what we actually did at work. So I, I really struggled to grapple with what was going on for like even like the first month, just reading the code and understanding how everything relates to each other was very confusing to me. But like I said, just persevere and ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Alright, so for now let's take a, like a short break. Does anyone have any questions right now? Can you repeat the book that you mentioned? Oh sure, um, it's realstutorial.org. I'm very afraid I'm giving you the wrong info. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's realtutorial.org. So uh, the, the book is called Ruby on Rails Tutorial. I'm I not, think I'm by... Yes, something something okay, generic. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like something generic. Uh, yeah, just just go realstutorial.com or dot org, and then there'll be a, so they'll try to force you to buy the printed book. But if you look on the left somewhere, there's a blue link. Read online for free. Yeah. Yeah. So, so click, on, click on that and, and go through that. So, oh, this is a record. Yeah. Well, of course, support the authors. But if they read online for free, link there. So, yeah. We can ask Michael to cut it out like that section. <laughs> uh, so someone else that has another question. Go for it. I had a question really around hiring. So uh -huh. um, I work within HR, but in tech space. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's a lot of questions coming up very recently around how do we hire better tech? Mm -hmm. Or how do we actually find people who are good at these jobs instead of taking in anyone who says they, can, they, they are a software engineer? So um, do you guys have any suggestions or any specific on that? Yeah, that's what's really So right? for our platform, we have a five-step evaluation process. Number one, the moment they sign on, we don't even look at their resume. They have to do an online code test that's automatically generated for them. If they pass that, then we go to a video interview where we test their communication skills. And then in that video interview, we do a live code test on the spot to make sure this is the guy who did that online code test. So there's lots of scammers out there who, you know, who get their friends to help them. And after that, uh, we may give them a project test and then a task test. So as a HR company, I don't know if you want to spend so much time going through it because a lot of people will drop off at the first stage or midway. But those who do get through everything actually uh, turns out to be pretty good. Yeah. I'm sure you're building a pipeline as well, right? So, um, can you just share your experience uh, you know, how many people actually get through so that you have enough of a catalog? 
Well, I mean, for us, it's more like we just keep growing, uh, but 95% of the people fail. But having said that, part of that 95% could have just given up because they don't want to spend so much time going through everything. Yeah. I didn't mean which stage most people fall off. Um, sometimes the first stage itself, you know, because we ask like algorithmic questions sometimes. Uh, so if you guys want to, no, don't try now. But after the bootcamp, <laughs> you want to try. Yeah, you guys, I don't want to demoralize you guys so early. But after the bootcamp, you want to try our website. You can just click join as a talent and you will immediately generate an online code test that you can try. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Can we use that as an uh, educational material? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, any other questions that uh, people want to talk about? Okay, lady at the back. Uh, so, this question is for Clara. Ah. Uh, future advice, how do you manage to get your first internship? And how was the transition from internship to a junior full-set? Um, I guess, in a way, I was quite lucky because my mentor during the boot camp, um, midway during the, uh, through the boot camp, he uh, told me he would prescribe me a series of tests, and if I passed, then I would get an internship with this company. And as for the next part of the question, how I transitioned from intern to junior, I honestly don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's within the same company. So um, after three months, they offered me a junior position, which I accepted. I'm not sure why they accepted. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, any, any, any further questions? Okay, it's my question. So, so I think like we, we talk a lot more about how do you um, the the kind of skills that you need to really enter the industry. I want to hear more about how do you what are some of the skills that you need to navigate in the in the industry. So maybe we can start from Gayong. Um, so you you are not a software uh, engineer, but you are we are currently now in solutions architect where you talk to developers a lot. Um, at the same time, you have to think on a business use case. It's, it's a it's a it's a very interesting balance between tech and also um, soft skills a little bit. So how do you so how do you make sure that you are always uh, up to date? How do you up to date? How do you keep yourself? What what are, what are things that you need? What are some of the skills that you need to be able to succeed in your in your role? So I think I'm lucky that I'm exposed to a lot of different customers who wants to know more about the industry and the technologies and especially Facebook has um, to be honest I found a lot of the good information from F8 from Facebook which is a developer conference and Build from Microsoft which is developer conference and also the IO which is Google conference those three conference is top three and if you are looking for another like uh, architecture side or cloud-based side, you can see the Salesforce and also Amazon is the most important things you need to watch. So those kind of conference keynotes will give you the ideas where you can go pursue and what's next because technology will never stop and you never know everything. So I don't want to keep myself up to date every day because I'm not a super hardcore computer scientist. <laughs> So I just want to keep myself to know about what's the terminology and where is the trend go forward and how do I utilize myself to get into that stream. So I suggest to watch the keynote at least. It is just only one hour and they strip it, spread it out every month. Okay, what about Suryan? Don't, don't say you're lucky, because yeah, one well, of them I used it already. <laughs> oh, so what was the question? <laughs> what are some of the skills um, that are important for you to navigate in and also succeed in this industry? Being able to Google. <laughs> no, seriously, I learned everything through Googling you know, most of the time. You, you hit a bug, copy the error message into Google, and start reading Stack Overflow. How did people solve it? See the solution, copy it, and paste it into your own code. That's really how it is, you know. So if you end up getting stuck a ton of times, it's very normal. Even the pro coders, even that guy sitting there, I'm sure he gets stuck a lot of time and has to Google a lot. And so the key is to know how to Google and keep Googling and reading patiently. You'll get better at finding the right terms after a while and you'll get better at copying and pasting answers. <laughs> it's true, you know. <laughs> I just copy and paste things all the time even though I code, you know, these days, yeah. Okay, awesome. Is there any last questions? Okay, go for it. Uh, 
question. So maybe for her, could you describe a little bit how is your typical day at work? Like, you like you're facing computers all the time? Short answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think they will be able to share. Um, it's really like eight hours in front of the computer. Kinda. I don't really know how else to describe my job. Yeah, but you are doing things like um, reading documentation, writing code, or like testing or debugging anything that went wrong with your code. And like she said, googling and reading Stack Overflow for answers. Yeah, it's pretty much like that. It really is facing the computer. Yeah. So just to add on for on our uh, question, could you break down like the ratio of your your day? Like how many of it is just reading and understanding? How many of it is googling? How how much of it is uh, actual creating? Typing. Yeah. How typing. much of it is pulling your hair out? <laughs> <laughs> that is constant. But um, I would say actually for me, because I'm still quite junior, I spend a lot of the time reading code and trying to understand it first. The actual typing is really not that much, because <laughs> you have to understand what's going on before you can start typing. Yeah. So I, I can't really break it down to percentage. I guess mm. like seventy reading, thirty typing. Yeah. Okay. Do you still code? So you still code, right? At your yeah, yeah, I still do. Uh -huh. And on my Facebook, I posted a disgruntled picture of myself. You know, still trying to figure out a bug at like seven a.m. in the morning. I had not sleep the night before just figuring out my bug. Yeah. Oh, one thing on the ad, there's no shame in copying and pasting solutions because ninety percent of the time, any bug you have experienced or faced, someone has faced it as well and they would have shared the solution online so there's no shame in copying and pasting and learning from other people's solution yeah mm. so copy everything yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe i can add about github or like sample code from the well-known pages so like people don't want to learn that someone others code before they learn how to read and how to write a code. But I do suggest to run the code, the sample app first, because that will give you the more ideas of where I should start. And even the environment setting is quite hard when you start at the beginning. So I do suggest the like, perfect code to run it first. So GitHub is like a social network for nerds. So people put their, <laughs> they create stuff uh, and, they, and they put uh, put their codes up for for everyone to see. So one of the ways to one of the ways to um, really learn is by studying other people's work that they put online and available for everyone. So that's GitHub. Uh, com. So okay. So last question. Since a lot of here, a lot of people here are first time and probably how many of you are, are engineers, developers now? Okay. So the rest are all interested to learn, starting to learn. So what is one piece of advice other than perseverance? What is one piece of... <laughs> sorry, I just stole your answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's one piece, what is one piece of advice you will let people like that um, know? People who are trying to learn how to code. Um, maybe some, maybe want to point them to some good resources other than Michael Hartle. Again, stealing your answer, Clara. So okay, other than Michael Hartle um, and perseverance, what are some of the words or nuggets of wisdom you want to let them know. Let's close out the panel discussion with that. Well, <laughs> if you have an interesting com company or app, I recommend to find out how do they build be before you like choose what language and how do you want to learn. Because when you have an interest, like a word is name for me, you can deep dive more about that. So it, whether it is language, whether it's algorithm, whether it's UI, I do believe that. So you can easily find out the information when you are Googling. Yep. Mm, for me, I guess, um, other than perseverance, <laughs> um, would be to learn to be patient with yourself. Uh, because for me, I constantly get frustrated with myself when I can't figure problems out. Then I start feeling like I'm the dumbest person in the world. And then my senior engineer comes over like, oh, da, 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 done. And I'm just feeling like an idiot. But uh, it's all right when you're learning. And just um, don't beat yourself too much. Beat yourself up too much when you're learning because you are just stopping after all. Yep. Can I ask them a question? Sure, no. Why do you guys want to learn coding? Just yell out your answer. Just yell out your answer, yeah. yeah. Okay, who's here to learn coding to do like a startup idea they have? Oh, only two. The rest, why you're learning, is it? It's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, it is cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the job is, uh, if you look at like uh, job search, right, there's a lot of things going on with like tech industry, with web developers, 
So I'm like, I'm in, I'm in sales right now, and you know, when I want to, like, um, personally, I feel like, you know, it's still something that I really want to do, you know, maybe perhaps you know, I should, like, try something new, and maybe move towards the market industry trends that would be very, very helpful. All right, so uh, those of you looking to make a career switch, coding is just not one category only. You would have realized there's front end, back end, uh, a cool term called full stack, you know? <laughs> so if you're a more visual person, the kind who learns from visuals, I would suggest going, looking into front end development. It's good to know the back end, but you don't have to be super good at it. Like, you don't need to know how to write the AI for a chess player, you know? If you're a visual person, you know, there's a lot of jobs in the front end uh, where it involves more HTML and CSS. So for that, like, I really like W3 schools. Uh, people say it's a terrible resource, you know, but for me as a beginner, if you go w3schools.com, they actually teach you the front end part of coding in a very visual way, step by step. So you could try starting with that. Um, yeah, so try to decide if you're more of a back end coder or a front end coder and focus on that. Yeah. So I think to sum, sum up your three of your answers, basically is uh, find, understand what you like, what your strengths are, find a technology that fits that, um, could be like your dream or um, something that whatever, whatever, how people learn better. And while you're doing that, don't beat yourself up too much. So with that, let's wrap up the panel discussion. Let's give a round of applause to the panel speakers.